Welcome back. In video 11, we will be preparing financial statements, specifically the statement of cash flows. The statement of cash flows provide information on the cash receipts and payments for a specific period of time. It reports the cash effects of a company's operations during a period, its investing activities, its financing activities, the net increase or decrease in cash during the period, and cash at the end of the period. In summary, the statement of cash flow explains where cash came from and how it was used during the period. The statement of cash flows help predict future cash flows. It enables investors and creditors to evaluate managers' decision and help make predictions about the company's ability to pay debts and dividends. The statement of cash flow presents cash flows in three sections in the following order, operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. The first section on the statement of cash flows is the operating activities section. It reflects the day-to-day -day operations of the business, such as cash receipts from sale of merchandise and services, cash outflows for purchase of merchandise inventory, payment of operating expenses, such as rent, utilities, taxes, etc., interest or dividend income receipt. The second section of the statement of cash flow is the investing activities section. It explains change in long-term assets. It reports cash receipts or inflows from sale of property, plant, and equipment, collection of long-term notes receivable, and sale of investment. It reports cash payment or outflows to purchase property, plant, and equipment, make long-term note receivable, and purchase investments. The last section on the statement of cash flows is the financing activities section. It explains changes resulting from long-term liability and equity activities. It reports cash inflows from issuance of stock, sale of treasury stock, and borrowing money. It reports cash outflows to pay dividends, buy treasury stock, and pay off long-term liabilities, such as notes payable, bonds payable, and mortgage payable. The steps to prepare statement of cash flow includes the following. Step one, in the operating section, adjust net income for non-cash expenses, gains or loss, and increase or decrease in current assets and current liabilities to arrive at net cash flow from operating activities. Step two, in the investing section, determine changes in long-term asset section of the balance sheet. Step three, in the financing section, determine changes in long-term liability and equity section of the balance sheet. Step four, compute net increase or decrease in cash during the period. Step five, prepare a separate schedule reporting non-cash, investing and financing activities, if any. The indirect method starts with net income and is adjusted to net cash flow provided by operating activities. Information needed to prepare the statement of cash flow include income statement, balance sheet for current and prior year, additional information to complete investing and financing activities section. Here is the income statement for Minelli Landscape Design. Note that net income is 1743 and for depreciation expense of 119 These numbers will be used in the statement of cash flow. Here is the balance sheet for Minelli Landscape Design. We have a few current assets. Accounts receivable has a balance of 1900 There is no inventory, but there are two prepaid expense items, office supplies and prepaid insurance. So total prepaid expenses in this case, we add 650 plus 862, that gives us a total of $1,512. On the liability side, we have two liabilities. Accounts payable, 500, 
salaries and wages payable 750 there is no income taxes payable additional information regarding minnelli landscape design is owner's investment 25000 owner's withdrawals 1500 purchase of equipment 10000 this information will be used in the statement of cash flows there are 11 possible adjustments to net income in operating activity section under the indirect method we start with net income then net income is adjusted for the for the following items non-cash expenses depreciation depletion amortization these do not involve cash outflow so we would add back to net income gains will be subtracted from net income since they do not belong in the operating section and losses would be added back to net income to remove it from the operating section. Also under the operating activity section, we have to make adjustments for changes in three current asset accounts receivable, merchandise inventory, and prepaid expenses. If there is an increase in current asset, we need to subtract the amount of the change from net income and conversely, if there is a decrease in current asset, we would add the amount of the change back to net income. We also need to review the change in three current liability accounts. Accounts payable, accrued liabilities, and income taxes payable. If there is an increase in current liability, we would add back the amount of the increase to net income. Conversely, if there is a decrease in the current liability, we would subtract it from net income. Okay, so let's get started with the statement of cash flow. The first thing we would do is enter the three line heading, name of the company, in this case Minnelli Landscape Design, the name of the statement, which is statement of cash flows, and the period covered by the statement. In this case, we would say for month ended November 30th, 2015. The first subheading under the three line title is cash flow from operating activities. Recall that this is the first section of the statement of cash flow. Right beneath that subheading, we start with net income. Under the indirect method, we would start with in net income and adjust for the 11 items we previously discussed. So right underneath net income, we have a phrase that's starts with adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash flow from operating activities. So here are the items that needs adjustment for Minnelli landscape design. We will discuss what they are in a moment. Okay, operating activities section. To convert net income to net cash flow from operating activity, we must adjust for non-cash items. So first, we add back any non-cash items that have been deducted in arriving at net income. These items should be added back to net income since they do not involve a cash outflow. Non-cash items include depreciation expense, depletion expense, and amortization expense. Again, under the operating activities section, we must adjust for gains and losses. If there's a gain from the sale of long-term assets in the income statement, they must be removed from the operating section since this item belongs under investing activity section. So the adjustment necessary is to deduct the gain from net income. Conversely, if there is a loss from the sale of long-term assets in the income statement, they also, this also must be removed from the operating activity section and the adjustment necessary is to add back the loss to net income. The total proceed from the sale is then reported under the investing activities section. Most current assets and current liabilities result from operating activities. To arrive at net cash flow from operating activities, we must review the change in balances of current assets. These accounts are accounts receivable, inventory, 
and prepaid expenses. Now, if accounts receivable increase, net income includes credit sale for which cash has not yet been received. Therefore, net income should be reduced by the amount of the increase derived at net cash flow from operating activities. If accounts receivable decreases, then more cash was received than sales reported in the income statement. Therefore, the amount of the decrease should be added back to net income to arrive at net cash flow from operating activities. To arrive at net cash flow from operating activity, we must review the change in balances of current assets. An increase in inventory is a difference between the amount purchased and sold. An increase indicates that more cash was paid out than the amount reported on the income statement. Therefore, the amount of the increase should be subtracted from net income to arrive at net cash flow from operating activities. Decrease in inventory indicate that less cash was paid out for inventory than was sold. Therefore, the amount of the decrease should be added back to net income to arrive at net cash flow from operating activities. Increase in prepaid expenses indicate that cash paid for expenses were higher than expenses reported on income statement. Therefore, net income should be reduced to reflect additional outflow of cash. Decrease in prepaid expenses indicate that more expenses were deducted on the income statement than was paid out in cash. Therefore, the amount of the decrease should be added back to net income. To arrive at net cash flow from operating activities, we must review the change in balances of current liability account, such as accounts payable, accrued liability, income taxes payable. Accrued liabilities would include things like interest payable, salaries and wages payable, and things like that. If current liabilities increase, we need to add back to net income. Even though net income was reduced by an expense, cash was not reduced. Example, salaries and wages expense was accrued on the income statement, but not paid. Therefore, an increase in current liability should be added back to net income. Current liability decrease we would subtract from net income. Payment of liability decreases cash. If current liabilities decrease, this indicates that more was paid than was currently deducted on the income statement. Therefore, decrease in current liabilities should be subtracted from net income. So, let's look at the operating section of the statement of cash flow. Notice that since this is the first operating period, prior period balances are zero. Therefore, the amount of the change is the amount incurred during this period. Okay, first we start with net income in the right column. And then after the introductory phrase, adjustments to reconcile, we have depreciation expense from the income statement, if you recall, $119, non-cash expense. On the current asset side, we had accounts receivable of $1,900. Since the prior period was zero, this 1900 represents an increase in accounts receivable. And if you recall the rule, if we have an increase in a current asset, we need to subtract the increase from net income. Increase in prepaid expenses. If you recall from the balance sheet, there were two prepaid expense items, office supplies and prepaid insurance, the total of which was 1,512. Again, an increase is subtracted from net income. Now, on the liability side, an increase in accounts payable is $500, so we would add. An increase in salaries and wages payable of 750 would also be added back to net income. 
So if we were to add and subtract the positive and negative number in the left column, we would see the total adjustment is a negative 2,043. If we subtract this from net income of 1,743, this indicates that the net cash flow used by operating activity was a negative number. Next, we see the second section is the cash flow from investing activity. You recall that Minnelli purchased 10,000 equipment with cash, so this is an outflow, so therefore you see a negative 10,000. Recall that Minnelli invested 25,000 in the business and withdrew 1,500 during the period. There's the investment by owner, 25,000 withdrawals negative 1500 so we would have a subtotal positive subtotal of 23500 in the right column if we were to add the negative 300 from operating activity negative 10000 from investing activity and a positive 23500 inflow from financing activity we would have a net increase in cash of 13000 200. Once we have calculated net increase or decrease in cash, we would add the beginning cash balance from the prior period. But as we said before, this is the first period, so there is no prior period. And therefore, ending cash balance is 13,200. Note that the ending cash balance must agree with the cash balance appearing on the balance sheet. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. After financial statements are prepared, the books are closed at the end of the fiscal period. To learn how to prepare closing entries, go to video 12.